Welcome to the Interleave Power Factor Correction Reference Design Web Seminar. My name is Jorge Zambada. I'm an Applications Engineer for the High Performance Microcontroller Division at Microchip. Here is the agenda for today's seminar. We will briefly talk about power factor correction and its importance. We will also do an overview of what Interleave PFC is and key design factors will be discussed. Finally, we will talk about microchips IPFC reference design. We will have a short introduction to power factor correction terminology and why it is important. The power factor is defined as the ratio between the real power and the apparent power in an AC circuit. The real power represents the net energy transferred to the load over one complete AC cycle while the reactive power represents the fraction that is only temporarily stored by the load. The real power is the one measured and monitored for power consumption, and its associated energy is used to produce mechanical work and heating, for example. Traditionally, the power factor is associated with the cosine of angle between the real and apparent power components. For simplicity, the apparent power can be represented as the vector sum of the real and reactive power, but in the case of non-sinusoidal periodical signals, a more complex relationship between these components is considered. In the following section, we will have an overview of the proposed solution for power factor correction. We will talk about three different topologies that allow power factor correction, and we will also show a simplified electric diagram of an interleaf power factor correction circuit, or IPFC. A power factor correction block diagram can be divided into three main blocks. First, the rectifier which provides DC voltage to the PFC converter stage. Then we have the PFC converter itself which provides the control over the current shape and phase lag while regulating the output voltage. And finally, we have the controller block. The PFC converter can be implemented using different circuit topologies, each of them with their respective advantages and disadvantages. As it may be observed, the input is an AC supply. The output of the PFC is a DC voltage. An ideal PFC makes sure that its input impedance is purely resistive. This allows maximum use of usable power or real power. The feedback signals needed for the control loop are the rectified AC voltage, input AC current, and output DC voltage. The output of the control block is a pulse width modulation or PWM signal. In this slide, three of the most common topologies of PFC implementation are presented. We will highlight advantages and disadvantages of each of them. These topologies are buck boost, and buck boost converters. Starting with a buck converter, the output voltage provided to the low is always less than the input terminals, also known as a step-down converter. For the purpose of the power factor correction, the buck converter will function in discontinuous conduction mode. The boost converter has the output voltage greater than the input, also known as step-up converter. When using this topology for power factor correction, the current is continuous. As shown in the current diagram, continuous conduction mode allows a continuous current through the inductor. The combination of the buck boost converter, as the name suggests, is a combination of a buck converter and a boost converter, so that the characteristics of both are achievable. The output voltage can be greater or lower than the input voltage. One disadvantage of the buck and buck boost topologies is that the switch is not referenced to ground, which makes the driver circuit more complex. The buck boost topology also inverts the sign of the output voltage, which brings another disadvantage when it comes to a cost-effective implementation of the sensing circuitry. The preferred method of implementing PFC and interleaf PFC is the boost converter due to the reduced current ripple, simplicity of the gate driver implementation, and also because it meets our requirements of output voltage. 
the discontinuous conduction mode of buck and buck boost topologies would have a negative influence on the total harmonic distortion or THD and also a higher gate driver cost. The boost converter's operation is based on the energy stored in inductance L1 as shown in the circuit. When Q1 transistor is on, the current through the inductance is raising and flyback diode D1 stops conduction. As soon as Q1 switch opens, there is no path for the current that was flowing through the inductor except the diode D1, the output capacitor C3, and the load. D1 diode closes and starts conducting since the voltage on its anode is higher than the rectified voltage of AC source. The voltage across inductance L1 reverses its sign to maintain the current flow. This way, both the energy supplied by the AC source and the one previously stored in the inductor are transferred to the load and the output capacitor through diode D1. The input rectified voltage VAC and the output DC voltage VDC are measured using resistor dividers while the input current is measured using a shunt resistor. The role of the inductance in this power factor correction topology is essential. The physical size of the inductor increases with the power rating. Component size is one of the main reasons for implementing an interleaf PFC design. An interleaf PFC consists of a two boost converter sharing the same load capacitor. As we can see in the simplified schematic, if we assume that we have the same inductance for each boost converter, we can see that the energy stored by the system is doubled. Since the energy stored in the inductors is a key factor for determining the output power capabilities of the system, the output power provided by a single stage PFC can be provided by an interleaf PFC with much lower inductance values. Lower inductance values means smaller inductors for a given power rating. An interleaf PFC reference design is presented next. A simplified block diagram of a dual phase interleaf PFC is shown. As mentioned earlier, a second PFC converter is added sharing the same inputs and outputs. The difference between an interleaf PFC and a single stage PFC is that two inductors are used for energy storage. Since energy should be distributed equally, a load balancing controller is added to the interleaf PFC to make sure that the system compensates for variations in inductance values or feedback circuits. The interleaf PFC system has three main compensators, one for the voltage, one for the current, and one for load balance. Additionally, a feed-forward controller is implemented to compensate for sudden input voltage changes. The voltage error controller makes sure that the output voltage is not affected by load variations. The inputs to this controller are DC output voltage and the corresponding reference. The output of this controller is the current compensator reference. The current error controller regulates the phase and shape of the input current. This input current is the sum of both inductor currents, and it is measured using a shunt resistor. The output of this controller is a pulse width modulation, or PWM, duty cycle, which will be applied to the power MOSFETs. To balance the currents through both inductors, a load balance loop is implemented. The inputs to this compensator are the two currents IM1 and IM2. If these currents are different, an imbalance is detected. The PI controller will regulate this error and adjust the MOSFET's duty cycle. The output of the load balance control loop will be a duty cycle correction term, or delta PWM, which is subtracted from PWM1 to get the final duty cycle for the first boost converter, and it is added to PWM2 to determine the balanced duty cycle for the second boost converter. The IPFC reference design board can be divided into six main functional blocks. The PFC boost circuitry, 
the AC input block, the power supply block, the fault circuitry, and the user's interface and programming block. The two inductors can be seen for both stages, and MOSFETs with their respective diodes are mounted underneath the board with a heatsink for better heat dissipation. This is a brief description about component selection for the interleaf PFC reference design. For the semiconductor component selection, voltage and current rating is important. Besides power rating, conduction and commutation losses are also important factors for component selection. These losses will determine the overall efficiency of the system. The semiconductor component losses represent about half of the total system losses. The inductance selection is also related to the output power rating. The higher the output power, the bigger the inductance will be. Another aspect to consider in the inductor selection is the required input current ripple. The output capacitor is chosen so that the output voltage ripple is within specification. It also depends on the minimum holdup time so that controllers can act before the output capacitor losses its charge. The effective series resistance, or ESR, of the capacitor also affects the output voltage ripple. Therefore, the capacitor with the lowest possible ESR is recommended. The ESR of the capacitor can be lowered by coupling two capacitors in parallel if the board layout dimensions permit it. As a conclusion for this web seminar, we will talk about overall advantages of interleaf PFC compared to single stage PFC as well as references from our website that will help users understand the technical details of interleaf PFC. Interleaf PFC allows a more efficient power factor correction design. It also allows space savings since with a much smaller inductors are needed compared to single stage PFC design. Interleaf PFC also reduces output current ripple since two inductors are sharing one load at different times. DSPEC digital signal controllers combine the right set of peripherals and computational power to enable interleaf PFC control with a single device. This reference design offers a starting platform for these types of applications and a modular design of the software makes it easy to understand and to add other functions. For resources and information for switch mode power supply applications, please visit Microchip's SMPS Design Center at www.microchip.com SMPS. For details about our single stage PFC implementation, please refer to application node AN1106. And for the detailed description of the interleaf PFC reference design, please refer to application node AN1278 or visit www.microchip.com slash IPFC. This wraps up our Interleaf Power Factor Correction Web Seminar. Thank you for your interest in the DSPIC Digital Signal Controller.